See you there, fellows. Right, so I've got me this uh, wonderful machine right here, and an idea occurred to us. A fairly interesting one. So we were rummaging around the facility, right? Checking on stuff, putting snow removal equipment into storage, like portable snow blowers or what do you call them. We were also relocating a tiller and we noticed... Well, I mean, we knew that uh, this sort of equipment... You guys have seen what sort of clutch it uses, right? It essentially uses... A belt clutch that engages depending on tension. And so an idea occurred to us, why not take a car like this one and fit a sort of belt clutch to it? See how it works? Will it hold up even? Now we are not going to go out and buy specialized belts. Instead we'll use ones you'll find in a car like... Which ones would those be? Accessory belts, I guess. And for the water pump, uh, those are about the same, so yum. Let's grab a regular old poly V belt and turn it into a clutch. Let's do this. We make a belt clutch for a car, will it work? Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. And check out what we got here. We've removed the clutch. One of the pulleys is connected to the gearbox input shaft. And the other one is on the engine crankshaft. We've also set up a sort of intermediate shaft. That is going to be transferring the torque. Said intermediate shaft can be moved around. It is currently in the lowered position. So there is no tension on the belt. But the clutch cable terminates at the bracket where the intermediate shaft is sitting on, and so when you press in the clutch, the belts tighten up and torque transfer occurs. It is slightly unusual with the car having to move with the clutch pressed in, but hopefully this isn't too difficult to get used to. We've checked the belts don't pop off, everything is even, we are looking good. The shaft is sitting on bearings. Now let's see how the car is able to move around. Let's get to it. Okay, here's hoping the gearbox functions properly. The engine runs quite happily, though it is a bit cold, but okay. Well, I already feel like this is going to be slightly tricky. That would be first gear, and off we go. Okay, I've pressed the pedal, and we are moving. Excellent. My movements have to be inverted. Here we go. It is pretty unusual. I am trying to keep the thought in my head that the pedal has to be pressed in for the car to move forward. But if you absolutely need to get somewhere, I do think you'll get used to it. Release the clutch. First gear. Excellent. Slowing down, making sure not to press the clutch. The only thing I need to slow down is the brake pedal. Gonna accelerate. I want to see how confidently it's able to move forward. It's actually doing pretty well. Look at that, the belts 
are able to cope with the torque and um, transfer it from the engine to the gearbox. They're not even squealing. There's no slip. And that is good. The gearbox is working well. That's also nice. So the clutch works. The engine seems to be running better. And this is becoming easier for me. No, wait, look, there is a bit of slip in second. I did feel a bit of slip. Now let me try third. So engage third and see what it does in third gear. Oh yeah, right, press the pedal. Release, change gear, press it, accelerate. That's how this works now. Let me just... My leg is going for the clutch on reflex for the gear change. Didn't go in. And we're off. Change gear. Yeah, when there's a bit of load, it is slipping in second gear. There could actually be a few reasons for that, like, there might not be enough friction on the belts, I mean, we are running fairly small belts. And there might not be enough tension. Even though we did uh, seem to have gotten everything properly adjusted. That's second. It is slipping, yum. Let me get it into third. It's slipping in third as well. But at least I'm getting the hang of this. I press it and go, release it and shift. You can get used to it. This works, and pretty well. Oh, and now we have slip in first gear. Hey there, want to go for a ride? What have you done to it? I don't know, it's just a normal car. You're free to go for a spin. What do you mean you don't know? You've never driven a Samara before? We'll look on in the meantime. Put it into gear, everything works. What's with the clutch? Everything is where it should be, you see the pedal. Wait a second. Something's off? Okay, let me give you a hint. Release the pedal, put it into gear. Is it automatic? Nope. Nope. Well? Okay, get it into gear and now slowly press the clutch pedal. You want to put it into gear? I have. No, you haven't. Now you have. <laughs> and off he goes. The belt clutch is so smooth that the guy didn't even notice. Without knowing, he hopped in, pressed the clutch, and he's off. 
Nah? <laughs> He'll get the hang of it. He'll figure out what's up. He's having trouble. You failed your exam. Give it some gas. Sounds like an ass. The belts are making that noise. <laughs> He's used to having to release the clutch. Yeah, exactly, but here you have to press it in. I can't... Having trouble adapting? It's hard to reprogram your reflexes. I didn't have a problem. I mean, the first few times I did, but then I got used to it. Okay, guys, let's do a quick recap. This belt clutch setup, it actually works. And it works really well, considering we were running some slender belts. Of the type that would be spinning the alternator or the water pump. Yeah, not much beyond that. Oh yeah, maybe a power steering pump. Certainly not anything related to the transmission or to propelling the car. But we were able to make it so the torque is transferred through those tiny belts, which have no girth to them at all. But they held up and the car moved along pretty well. But then apparently they were getting a bit hot, which is what I think caused the slippage. But with a good set of belts, I reckon this should work the full 107%. But then this already seems like a 107% success rate. And that's all I got for you. Watch us, subscribe, send in your suggestions, comment, give us a big thumbs up. Alright, catch you later.